We're going to have a guest on tonight, a man who won a million dollars. He sure did. He sure did. You know, uh, I'm excited to talk to him about his Millie Maker win, but I'm more excited to talk to Travis Petty about winning the League of Legends live final. I mean, if there was a tournament that you could win, could you name one that you'd rather win than the League of Legends final? Probably the tournament champions. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Yeah. After Fair. winning the League of Legends live final, <laughs> it was 1.1 mil. Um, we got one time, one thing needed in the chat. Big day for man's with the shout out on Levitan's Polk interview. I did get the shout out on that. Uh, we did want to talk some Negranu Polk. He, uh, I should have reached out this up too. I was going to bring this up. Yeah, no, listen. we should talk about it. That, that challenge rounded up. Um, he's been doing the rounds. He's been taking his victory lap. Uh, what was you, you followed it far closer than I did. What was your kind of overall takeaway on, on how things ended? Um, I think I went from like thinking that Granu was just like, like what, what is he doing to like, I don't know, more respect f for him, like going in as a dog, improving, you know, as he did, um, the, you know, the whole luck thing I think seems to be the big, a big issue going around I, from watching it, not seeing their whole cards. Uh, it, it did seem like on Ingram's stream that, that Negreanu was getting pretty unlucky, but obviously you can't really tell. So, um, so who, so who knows, you know, I know he lost like six buy-ins on all in EV. That's not like the NLB all or whatever, but uh, it was interesting. Um, and like going through the, my like um, emotions on it was like, man, maybe I should get back in these, these streets to before, before Polk went on the, 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 the tour here, kind of coming to the same conclusion he said on Levitan's pod and all these other pods. I've listened to a couple of them uh, about the whole bot, not bot thing, but like the whole GTO strategy where the game's at. And he said something interesting. I don't know if he said this on Levitan's stream about his YouTube view viewership. Did you hear that part? Yeah. Where, where when he started his YouTube channel, it was like a certain age range and now as he's like he doesn't do it anymore but he could tell that it's more of an older audience now yeah and i think this is just purely from black friday that the the when the, the government shut down poker i don't think a lot of young guys know how popular poker was in 2006 7 8 9 that that was when i i found poker in like 2003 it was right before the money maker boom and i was absolutely obsessed i mean i was the guy buying the world poker tour dvds you know watching the old gus hansen clips like all yeah. of those guys even the random dudes from world series of poker turn like dutch boyd you know sammy farha these guys were characters and they were I mean, I followed them like I did reality TV show guys. And you're getting like the old guys like Stu Unger and stuff like that and like Johnny Moss and like, what do they know? Yeah. And like Barry, remember when Barry Greenstein's book came out, Ace on the River? And I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm like, what a piece of shit. Like that didn't help any. Like, like I guarantee it was, you know, it's cool. It's got like cool pictures in it and it's a nice like, you know. Uh, solid book and he tells yeah. some of his personal stories all that stuff's great but like as far as like strategy or something like that like it's clearly like someone's like you know barry you could capitalize on the poker boom and your personality probably sell like 30 40 000 copies if you just write some stupid shit in a book and i'm and i'm sitting there like how much is it i don't care i gotta get this yeah wow there's play hands for for raz at the end of the book and I read, I was gobbling those up. I mean, I think I read super system. I read Helmuth's book and he had like the different animal types that described the different type of players for whether they were tight aggressive. I think they were like a lion or like loose aggressive was a Jack rabbit or something. And I, I was just gobbling <laughs> that shit yeah. up. Did you, I didn't, I didn't eat him up. I didn't. And I also like, I, and I started, I started playing before the poker boom 
when I was a kid, like 18 and stuff. And so I got all those Klansky books and all that stuff. Um, and like even that stuff too, I was still, I was, I'm still skeptical of the Sklansky books. I know everyone kind of loves all that shit. I'm not like a, a huge fan of it, but you know what books sh someone should write right now? Here's what I would write if I was still playing cards. Did you ever, did you ever get in the blackjack streets back in the day? I mean, not, not grinding it hard. Okay. So I, oh, he's here. All right. Well, we'll, we'll talk later on that stuff. What no. are we talking about? We're, 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 we're talking poker. We've been talking Negrano Polk. Hang on. I got to answer CSU's question here. How many times have you seen rounders? So Pete, when I was playing all the poker tournaments with my buddies back in high school, I would watch that before every single poker tournament. Like that was my way I would amp myself up. I've probably seen it without being hyperbolic, probably 75 times. Um, <laughs> a lot of times. How many times have you guys seen rounders? My over under is probably over that. My over under would probably be like a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are out of control. Did I love movie? Love Five that. times. My roommate too back then, back in the poker days, he played poker too. So like he loved that movie. And so like, you know, this was this is like before you can watch anything anything you want at any second, right? So like you throw on fucking rounders, you know, and you're having a couple of drinks. Especially if the World Series around the World Series time, you know, get you pumped up. That's fair. That's Did fair. you hear Polk said, Polk said he thinks that the total viewership was higher than any World Series event? He might not have said that in that interview, but I'm one of them. And I'm like, maybe, maybe it is. Maybe. What did he say for viewership? Yeah, I think so. Like the amount of views, because it was on like five different channels for 30 days or something like, or however many days it was. I feel like that's an interesting calculation to make because – I'm sure the total number of just viewers scrolling through, you know, ESPN poker is like greater, but the amount of engaged fans, I would probably agree. Like people who are tuning into this are fucking engaged. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's different. So like I thought about it, like with the, with the, with the whole GTO thing that the age, the average age of the poker player is getting older. I don't see if, big future for it to like spend time at personally. And so like um, with the GTO stuff, like it, just really quick to go back to that book idea. One of these books, the blackjack books back in the day, I would be counting cards. There was a book called blackjack attack. It was a really good one. One of the things I remember in that book, and this is so long ago was he had a heuristic for when you're counting cards, aces are important and you have to keep track of how many aces there are. And he just, he just, he just put a chart out there of like, like a bunch of the ACE counts are meaningless or, or they're like meaningless enough. So if you just count, let's say these 14 combinations or something like that, I can't remember exactly what it was. You get like 98, 99% of the value, the EV out of it instead of memorizing hundreds of things. And so like, that's the book I think someone should write for GTO poker is you could do a lot of things like that. We just simplify all these solver solutions into like in this situation, you do it 33% of the time, right? And then you could use, now they have these random, uh, you know, just the counters, the one to 100 randomizers right next to your HUD. We didn't have that back in the day, but that's exactly what I would I would have used too. I was thinking that before he even showed it. I'm like, I would put a HUD up on there. And like, so like back in the day when we were playing, let's say you're playing a regular pet and like, uh, you know, you're getting three bet a ton. What I, my strategy was at the end is I would use like the Ace of Spades as my, randomizer four bet because you know it takes a lot of the combos away of ace king ace queen aces um and it, i didn't know what the salute i don't know how many percent of times i need to bluff four bet but i know against these guys i gotta do something so i'm like okay if i have the ace of spades in my hand i'm gonna bluff four bet every fucking time every every rag every single time but like it's much easier if you just like you know it's like five percent and you just click the randomizer button and then it goes oh you roll the one two three or four or five it's bluff time, you know, and then you just keep every time you come into a tough spot, you go, you go think about it. And this is before solvers and you go like, I don't know, 25% of the time. And you just start memorizing what you personally think you could come up with like your own GTO strategy. I'm talking like, you know, 2009, 10, whatever back then. That's what I would have done. Had I redone this all over again. Teddy, let people know what, what is your background with poker? Because today I was looking for some photos for, you know, adding to the YouTube thumbnail and I was stumbling across some very old photos of you back in the, in the day, I assume playing poker. 
You know, you might have stumbled across when I was uh, playing in Argentina. I was 19. Jeez, sorry, guys. Uh-oh. Uh, I was 19 years old, I think, in that video you may have came across. And uh, it's funny you mentioned Doug. I've known Doug since I was maybe 12 or 13. We used to play Warcraft 3 against each other, actually, all the time. And then we played poker as well, and he taught me poker a bit. So we have a weird little background there. There you go. Did you have any action down on the Negreanu Polk match? No, I burnt out of poker. I haven't been in the poker scene in so long. I, I played way too many hands when I was in it, and I, I don't even think about it anymore, to be honest with you. Brian, that sounds like you. That's exactly it, yeah. The only thing I – was this challenge. I was, for some reason, I'm like, yeah, let's see what it's like. And I I watched probably like 10, 10 sessions. And and it did give me a little bit of maybe – maybe? Nah. I have – I have a CSU texting me and he was in the chat. He wants me to ask Petty about the Corona Poker Club, but I'm pretty sure we already talked about that last time you were on. Chad. That was a debacle. That was great. Uh, no, when I was playing that poker club, I don't mind saying it now. They thought I was some mega shark, but I was use, literally using a push fold chart and just doing whatever on the side and they couldn't figure out. They were just, they, everybody was way too conservative with their play and it, it was just printer. <laughs> it, there was really no skill involved at all. <laughs> Wait, Except besides hey, Googling. You were, a you were in the Google. You were in this, this group and you were using a push pull chart. It was as simple as that. I think you could literally find the first thing. I, I It was the first thing I found. I'm pretty sure if you Google push fold chart and <laughs> I followed this thing, I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> you were just raking. Uh, I mean, I did pretty good, but I got lucky too. I, you know, a little bit of both. And then, you, and then you got, I, but I heard that that entire poker club, and God, every time I talk about this poker club, all of a sudden Kirk D's will just come out of the woodwork and get so bad at something I say. So I feel like I can't even say anything about the Corona poker club. There was so much nonsense associated with that club. I don't even, I didn't know where to start. And I don't think I know, I don't want to start anyway. Yeah. So Peter, sorry, sorry. Don't get us uh, started on this tangent. We're, we're here to talk about petty theft for those of you guys who don't know took down the millie maker tournament of champions you've been making the rounds doing all the big hits draft kings your own twitch stream and now Lulz. <laughs> what has it been like since shipping that millie i gotta hit all the spots right for my my talent site that's never gonna happen no it's it's been incredible uh it just you know it being a super bowl this Super Bowl in particular, Tom Brady versus Mahomes, Corona, and a million to first winner take all for a first tournament champions is like the perfect storm. It literally could not have been better. And that was, uh, it was 40 people in the contest, right? There was 39 people, but one had two entries. You know, you know who know. that was? Who was it? Yeah. It's our, RBX. No way. It was RBX with two entries. So all the Million Maker winners were there. So can you imagine trying to out luck box all the guys <laughs> who win a million? It's not easy. So, so I text for the record, I was rooting against Petty. I had a piece of RBX in this. Uh, venture. <laughs> I mean, I, that's a good bet. I, I, I saw like a showdown. So RBX, I'm sure is way better than I am. Was this, uh, did you get a piece from the, from discord talk, Brian? Is that or that? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later. I don't think I want to, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if he's cool with me talking about it. So that's I'll, fine. I'll, RBX is a pretty chill dude. What was your, I, I honestly, I haven't seen yet. What was your lineup that won, Travis? So I had Gronk captain, Fournette, and then a four-man Chiefs passing stack with Mahomes, Watkins, Hill, Kelsey. Okay. So garbage. It was complete garbage. <laughs> That's when it came to me. I was like, this life is so bad and it's good. I'm trying to make a good show down lines. It doesn't work. That's, that's it doesn't work. For 40, man. Um, uh, and so I'm assuming you had the only Gronk cap captain in a 40 there's one other oh really two so one. two out of 40 so that's even worse <laughs> I, I mean in the end i won that's all that matters right no yeah sure. the process right results are a process yeah. we we invited you on the show to actually berate you for how bad the lineup yeah, I like was. RBX i'm okay with that <laughs> Those are sharper. <laughs> i i don't have a clue what rbx put out there i i so i'm sure it was better than mine he, you know, actually, my he actually had three lineups no 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 three. no no two no, he he had two. Had two yeah me too he did. I think he did you, one. You were supposed one. to save the thing about the three lineups for after the show too, Brian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's spicing his line. One Evans, one Godwin, I think. And okay. Yeah. 
What was yeah. uh what was your sweat like uh for that? I mean, Ooh. the thing I I don't like playing single entry three max showdown stuff because the sweat is so hard to track with every single play meaning so much. But what what was that experience like with a million on the line and only 40 people? So I only looked at so many guys in like the start in the fourth quarter because there's me and two other guys that had a really good chance. And then of course anything can happen next like seven or so guys, but me and two other guys had the biggest chance. There was a guy in the lead, maybe seven or eight points going the fourth quarter, but he had no Mahomes. He had uh, Kelsey, no Mahomes, and I don't think any other really Kansas City players. Another guy had Kelsey captain with Mahomes, no other Kansas City guys that I remember. And then I had Watkins Hill with Kelsey and Mahomes. So my outs were 100% Hill and um, and Watkins. And, you know, Watkins didn't play a fourth quarter snap. You know, I wasn't happy about that. We were looking for 14 every player. We're like, he's gone. He's done. And then, uh, but Hill started coming alive at the end. It was like the perfect script to make a comeback because, you know, uh, Hill was going to get some catches eventually. But uh, I needed that Hill catch the second to last play of the game before those meals. That Hill catch put me in first place. And uh, the Holmes interception, I was like, I was excited about it because the game was over. Kelsey can't score a touchdown. I was like, oh shit, there's actually another guy, the guy without Mahomes. I'm like, he might have just caught me. Yeah. So it was insane. That would have hurt. Oh yeah, I, it would hurt really bad. I, I didn't know where I was. The you know before the hill play, I knew it was up, I was behind like point eight points, but uh, so I knew I was first after that play, but I, I didn't know what the Mahomes play did. Well, how how clean was your sweat on Sunday? Was that the only action you had, or were you dabbling in other stuff? Oh, I had one lineup that that single lineup and nothing else except that tournament. I wanted to try to enjoy the event because I am a mess when I watch games. Like I, I think I'm pretty calm compared to most people, but. I overanalyzed everything. I just wanted to go to the game and have a good time. And you did, know, you, that's, did you? Were you there? Yeah, we were yeah. all there. I'd oh. say about yeah. Oh yeah, I should have said that first. There are probably about 85, 90 percent of people that were in the tournament went to the game. Okay, I saw a photo of Bobby Gomes and RBX eighty eight on Instagram from there, yeah. and I couldn't. I wasn't sure if that was like a Boston DraftKings party or what that was. So you guys were all in uh, Tampa. No, that was RBX's personal party that he invited all us to because he's, you know, so rich with all his money making. You know. He decided to, to invite. No, I found myself in his party. No, it was a it was a DraftKings party. Okay. Uh, yeah, I met I met RBX there and his his crew of guys. But uh, yeah, we all had suites there. We had like three suites or whatever between the hundred whatever people there, the employees and, and the players, and plus ones. It was it was awesome. There you go. It, any good stories from uh, from the weekend? Oh man, so I got there Saturday. Saturday night. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm kind of COVID conscious, so I don't want to be there too long. Uh, everybody had a test every day. I get there probably around 6 p.m. to the party. And unfortunately, I decided to try to make up for lost time and, and get to the alcohol real quick. <laughs> I left there at midnight. I probably had like four or five Jack Cokes, two or three old fashions, and I was just destroyed. Uh, the Super Bowl day was not fun. You know, the, outside the whole experience in, in winning, it was, it was tough. My stomach was crushed because all they had at the event was like oysters and fancy food. I just wanted a hamburger. Yeah. And it just didn't happen. Um, so I had nothing in my stomach. I flew that day and I drank way too much. And, you know, I, my stomach was crushed the next day. So, you know, if, if I lost the Super Bowl experience, would have been a lot, lot different. Um, that is but, the, I've had those times. I've, uh, a lot of times I fly out to San Diego and then drive out for a Vegas weekend with my buddies. And my hardest night is the first night in San Diego. And I'm pulling into Vegas, just hung over out of my mind. I'm like, what did I do? Like, I'm not going to make it through this weekend. You, why can't we pace ourselves? No, the, the funny thing is like everybody after a one, they're, they're like, you won? You didn't, you didn't move the whole night. I was like, I couldn't move. I didn't want to move. I was content just sitting there watching the game and enjoying it that way. We got a question from Dave here. True or false, you threw up on Super Bowl Sunday. No, I wish I did. It would have been <laughs> a lot easier if I did. The guy next to us, the, this after Super Bowl night next morning, was puking his mind out. I don't know who was next to me in the hotel. I don't know if he's a fancy sports guy. Probably was. He was dying. Uh, but no, I, I was in the mode where you, you, know, you chuck water and you're hoping things go better. I remember the bus was pulling up to the game. We we're probably half a mile away from the game, but we we're in such bad traffic. I told the bus driver, like, dude, I can't do this anymore. I got to get out of here. <laughs> He tells me, no, we can't, you can't go out the, the side door. Like, there's there's traffic. I'm like, so what are we going to do? He gets out of the bus in the median, and I go down his driver's side door, just run to the checkers across the street. And the traffic was so bad that I was able to, like, power walk my way five minutes later back to the bus and get back on. Can't on the way to the Super Bowl game. It was rough. 
What was that? The have you done any traveling before that in the COVID era? Like what? What was that experience like being at this event, this celebration, this party, but being conscious of all that? Oh, the people there in Tampa don't give a shit. It was different <laughs> being from California. They they don't care at all. It was wild. Uh, I felt relatively safe because we were in a suite. Everybody in there was was tested and whatnot daily, um, other than like the servers and whatnot, which is like one or two people. But I, I felt pretty good, you know. Uh, being on the streets, I would never have done that. People are nuts. Did you guys see the Tom Brady footage from today at their party? Good for him. I did see that. Brian, did you see that? Those clips? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brian, did you, did you go for the, uh, the tournament of champions was just if you won any of the Millie makers, correct? Yeah. I I wish I was invited. Not quite. It was Millie Maker's like? best ball. Oh, that's another good story. I was sitting, I was sitting right with the guy uh, who made who made it via best ball, and um, uh, Neil Orfield, I think his name is. He's he he made it as well. He won a Millie Maker. He asked the guy next to him. I don't know if it's the plus one or the guy. I think it was the guy. He's like, "What's your screen name?" The guy's like, "I'm not sure. Let me look at my phone." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" He might have been the plus one, but. I'm not positive. It sounds a lot better when I say he's the best ball champion. So Did he? No, keep I, it hope, that way. I hope he was one of the guys that when everyone lost their mind, when they were giving out the free tickets and people were getting Devonte Adams in the third round, he was just like, yeah, man, I just hopped into a draft and all these guys were falling to me. That is, that is incredible. It, it was, when I heard that, I was like, you know, what? I'm not maybe as, as bad off in this term as I thought I was going in. <laughs> I, I don't know how he finished, but um, yeah, when I heard that, I was, that was, that was good. Wow. What a, it what else did they have as part of the the event experience? So Thursday they did Thursday no no Thursday was like the welcome thing, same thing. They, I think every night ended at the restaurant and, and there's like a you know sweat whatever games they have gone all you need food and drink. Friday they did a catamaran in the morning and I think they did like an NFL Super Bowl experience during the day on Saturday. Ugh. Where you do uh, it's like you can punt pass kick thing. You, I would love to do that. The kid of me wants to do that and, and, and see how I can do. Wait, did you not do it? No, I mean I got there Saturday night, oh, so I missed God. I missed all the all those events. Um, but everybody said that it was horrible because you had to wait in lines, and they didn't realize they gave you like a RFID thing on your wrist that you could skip all the lines with being from DraftKings. So a lot of people screw that one up. There you go. What's I uh? I can't stand that shit. Hey, you get to meet an NFL player. I don't fucking care. Virtually, too, for those as well. Those oh, are virtual. Wow. Yeah, I think I, I got invited. Actually, I got invited to one of those stupid fucking things. I'm like, why do I want to fucking meet, talk to some 20 year old douchebag? Like, he's a, just an idiot athlete. Who gives a fuck? Like, I what's wrong with you people? <laughs> I just got to, next time it's your birthday, Brian, I'm going to get you a, a cameo from like Cameo's Rock Grossman different. or something. That's okay. <laughs> like, I want a Jose Canseco cameo. I'll take that. Okay. But like, as a bit, I don't want to talk to these people. That's like, what the cameo is for, though. Twenty year old, what twenty year old do you want to have a conversation with? I think it'd be pretty cool to talk to an NBA player who's twenty something years old. I'm sure there's some crazy stories. Uh, I, okay, ma- okay, and they're gonna tell you this on the the, the 15 minute promotional uh, event. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. No, it's gonna be some stupid bullshit with fanboys. <laughs> I did. Uh, I did just rip through. Jared Dudley has this new book out uh, about his time in the bubble, and some of the stories were pretty good about them hanging out in LeBron's suite, drinking wine, and just what that whole experience was like. But generally, I'm with you, uh, Brian, on that. Uh, the no, difference. I'm a bit of a hardliner. You, you're a bit of a curmudgeon. I think just let let these people have their fun interacting with these celebrities, Brian. I don't say anything. I, I mean, I'm on my show, so I'm say, saying it now, but I don't like I attack. Think, I think you know, Brian's just bitter. You know, Travis. You know, going to the Millie Maker events, meeting people. I'm friends with Patrick Laird, and and Brian's just kind of here holding his dick at home in Chicago. <laughs> my beef <It> sausage. <laughs> You got you got to keep in mind, as you said, there are a lot of fanboys there and whatnot. You're brick seventy five. It's not a big deal to you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's no big deal. You know, you probably go out somewhere, hit somebody with DM, like pro athlete shows up. But for these people who don't know the screen on DraftKings, it's a big deal. I, should, go to, I went to one DraftKings event. And the guy, some, one of the guys there, asked me my screen name. I'm like brick seventy five. He's like, really? <laughs> I brought one of my buddies from from home, and he's like, that guy was like impressed by your screen name. 
I heard Brian goes out with the Chipotle bros in Chicago and they call themselves the pussy posse and they're just kind of fending <laughs> off women left and right. There's only one Chipotle bro here. So, <laughs> okay. It's funny you say that the only guy I've ever gone out with like outside of that was, was Papa, the Chipotle bro. And it, you know, he's, he's good with the females. Oh, there you go, Brian. Yeah. There you go. Um, did you, so did you, how much of your lineup did you have set before you got absolutely plastered? I had absolutely nothing set. <laughs> I haven't played football in a month. So I got to my laptop in the morning. I'm like, oh God, what am I doing? I don't even remember what I'm doing here. <laughs> I haven't played showdown in probably two months. So I actually made a lineup initially and I asked a buddy like, hey, what do you think about this lineup? He's like, dude, that's the, the blitz optimal one. I'm like, oh, shit, that's not good. <laughs> that's horrible. So I ended up just excluding Ronald Jones because I thought yeah. he was way too underpriced. And I'm like, shit, I'm just going to roll with this. And that's what, that's what came up. It looked horrible, which is probably a good thing is my opinion. Wow. Shout out Derek Cardi. You know, you just make the slight pivot off the Cardi optimal and you're, you're yeah. Rolling. And uh funny thing about go back to what Brian said about, you know, somebody recognize his name. I had somebody come up to me at the thing. I'm like, he's like, you're paid the thing. I'm like, yeah. He's like, dude, do you, do you play FanDuel NBA anymore? I'm like, yeah, I play every night. You just don't see me. I've got my ass kicked for months. <laughs> <laughs> it's been horrible. Yeah. You know, they can't search my name. I did, I'm not the top of the leaderboards ever anymore. Yeah. That's the worst. No, yeah, it, it was, I got that a couple of times actually in the last, Last week or so. Oh man, yeah. I'm still personally most jealous of you winning the League of Legends championship because I fired a bullet in that. I believe I was sweating it on a golf course. Uh, whatever lineup I ran just crashed and burned. For you to win that, Brian and I built this show brick by brick on League of Legends, and for you to just sweep in and win that, I mean, that was so tilting. And then that's how. I mean, that's how I got the ticket to the event. By the way, the oh League of yeah. That's that's what yeah most of these guys won million makers and whatnot. I won a League of Legends championship. I was by far the smallest first place prize I got to that event. I, I was the fish. Brian, how does that make you feel? You and I parlayed our League of Legends fandom into this, you know, very moderately successful podcast. Travis rolled it up into a million dollars. Yeah, I think that's about even. <laughs> I mean, and, and I hate to break it to you, but it was a little more than that because they gave me a badass ring on top of it. Yeah, let's see the ring. I saw that on your DraftKings set. Don't uh, act like it's not on your desk. You already put it in the like, cold oh. storage? No, the problem is that every time I leave it on my desk, my fiance is like, what the hell are you doing? This thing is worth more than a couple bucks. <laughs> let's see it. Get the ring. I think I saw it. Wasn't it like diamond encrusted? It did look when it looked like it looked a really sick ring. Uh, yeah. It's so ridiculous. Yeah, that's dude. Good. Do you know if they give those out if you win the mini max? I just need a realistic goal. I, I think they have a smaller version of it. That's, that's <laughs> the, the mini. The mini version is perfect. It's just one of those ring pops. <laughs> yeah, so those things are pretty cool, actually. I don't mind a ring pop. I actually like that because they sometimes give the belt, right? That was something too. Like the yeah, ring is also, way cooler. Oh, well, the I ring's think. way cooler. But like, what am I going to use the ring for? This ring is is heavy. It's legitimately heavy. I can't. My, my fingers get tired putting that on. Come on, that's that's how you got to you got to start doing curls with your ring finger. I think. No, Pete. I, I was saying after someone's like, "Are you gonna wear it?" I'm like, right now, I'm wearing an Adidas sweater, some <laughs> random jeans. Like, I can't wear that at a football game with all these people around that are dressed up way nicer than I am. It doesn't fit. You just need to go like the Ali G mode and just wear <laughs> track suits and just be all blinged out. I mean, I think that would be a better look with, with that. I, it makes sense at least. Just some baller who doesn't give a shit. But like, I actually have like a like a, a nerd's outfit on. It it, it didn't work. It didn't there you work. go, Brian. Uh, did you meet uh, uh, Woo Woo? Yes, or, yes, I did. Dude, is and, he a party animal? I, you know, he was just slamming Bud Lights in the back with his dad. He was having a good time. <laughs> uh, I didn't know it was him until. Uh, more or less like the, the day of the suite, like he was in my suite with me and uh, I, I kind of talked to him a little after I won. He was so happy for me. I was, you know, he was a lot better of, 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 you know, of the guy to get first than I would, I would have been bitter, pissed and, and, and salty. He was really nice. He was, he was happier for me than most people than, than like myself. I felt like he was really nice. He was really, really nice. Did you see, you see he's slamming the high stakes, right? He's up there. You, I'm assuming you. Oh, oh, I've noticed he's kicked yeah. my ass for months now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been seeing it. You know how in, in poker, they're constantly saying, I, I might've already said this line before, whatever I do a million shows. You know how they say in poker, like, is this good for poker? I think woo woo guy is good for DFS. Oh, he's great. I, you know, he seems like a, I mean, he's a very smart guy. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. 
it's hard to tell with guys with, with, with quick success, whether they're going to hold on or not. Cause guys come and go real quick, but he's 100% sharp enough. I just, I wonder if he's too nice for the DFS streets. You got to have a little anger in you. I feel like a little, little fire. Brian, I just want to say that you've gone from posting um, memes that are not that flattering about RBX 88 on Twitter to now get taking a piece of him in the tournament of champions. I mean, this is the narrative arc of the DFS century. I would say those memes were ball busting memes. They were that mean. That was RBX's revenge to you. You probably took a big piece of him. He's like, you know what? I'm going to screw Brian over. I'm not going to win. <laughs> and then yeah, RBX88, he comes on the podcast, he slides in the Discord, well, and now he's going to be the best man instead of me. I know it. He's going to be pissed off that Patty Theft is on here because he's been he's been trying to come back on here uh, as another Millie Maker winner. And we Patty took his we, opportunity. I've, I always DM with RBX88 on Instagram because he's not on Twitter. And he's always, he like, he knows the deal that he has to win a Millie Maker to come on the show because that's been. <laughs> That's the tough. circumstance, but he like in his head. He's been out here like three minutes. He's like, yeah, I'll just see you next time I win a milli. I'm like, yeah, you will. <laughs> he probably will. He, he, he probably honestly will. Oh my god! I heard, I, someone told me a story that he like won a golf milli with a burger who's like mega shock, and he had one lineup with burger on it or something like that. Something crazy. His Good core fell apart. It was just a one off lineup. <sighs> what a feeling that must be. Yeah. Well, it, what was it? What you said you uh, ran into his crew there. What's the RBX 88 crew like? Yeah, I feel like I was about to leave the first night and then I, I, I might be blur. My, my, it was a blur, but I feel like I ran into him and he like he stopped me at the door or something and he introduced himself. I and mean, I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm way too shit faced to do this right now. Um, but he was really nice. His crew were nice guys. I, I met Bobby um, just as I was about to leave. So, you know, my, my fiance is like, you know, who are those guys like? Oh, that guy's won way more million makers than I have. <laughs> he, he's 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 a real baller. And Bobby too. Bobby won the first million maker. See, yeah, I I can't go to one of these things because I will stay up till six, eight in the morning with these guys. I guarantee it's probably what happened. I, I mean, I tell myself every time I go to these events, like just have a good time, but don't don't go nuts. Just just relax, you know, enjoy yourself, and then it's too I, fun. I just. I, I, it is a good time, you know, because I do enjoy talking DFS and it's it's cool to talk to guys who are, you know, not pros as well. You know, they have normal jobs. There's a lot of big boy jobs in these events, like lawyer, doctor, everything. And it's this whole, I mean, you see this concept play out too. It's the same reason, you know, we like doing shows because DFS and a lot of this gambling stuff is a solitary endeavor. Lots of time at your computer by yourself locked in. Like it's fun. And then you get to meet up with people under these circumstances. Like it feels like a wedding, right? Like you just want to party and just have fun. No, it's really true. You know, I can only sit here so many times by myself and tilt Chris Boucher going off before you know, I lose my mind. Yeah, is he going off? He, he had like a two ppm first half. He played like eight minutes. He's pretty being yeah, pretty damn talk. Nothing's happening. Nothing. It's fine. All right, I'm legally obligated to ask on every stream I do. What are Petty Theft's thoughts on Top Shot? Oh God, how much time do I have? <laughs> yes, this is what I, I need. I need I, some I, cold I, I water. Should, I do have to do some do some swapping a little bit, but uh, I got about ten minutes. Wait, um, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about Top Shot. A, I think it's ridiculous because, first of all, I'm a huge, huge NBA fan. I think trading cards are cool, but I think they're overpriced. So I, I don't have any personally, but I get it. Like, I get it. I should be the and – and I have a little bit of disposable income too. I should be the target audience for the top shots. And I understand the crypto or whatever that is, well, the blockchain. And I think it's the most ridiculous thing ever. Like, you're you're, you're buying these moments that – some of these moments have like 5,000 plus of the same thing. And plus, by the way, there's also another moment on YouTube. You can buy the same exact thing of all these things. It's just, it's to me, it makes no sense. I don't get it. I think that the market is 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 just what it is because everybody's making a quick buck. So it looks easy. I have no clue who's buying these moments at certain prices. I think there's some sketch things going on. I can't prove it. So I'm not going to say it's 100% happening. But if I was a site owner and I didn't care morally about, you know, anything, I would be buying these moments up with all the money they didn't make it and building interest. On top of that, you can't withdraw. So people have all their money still on the site. Uh, there's they have, they have certain people on Twitter that are influencing stuff and telling people, hey, this is great. Bye, bye, bye. And I, are, you I just talking about, 
Are you talking about someone that's doing Top Shot streams? Look, or just- I, 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 no, no, no. I, I don't know what streams you do. I, I'm not. I'm not talking about you in particular. I'm not gonna say who I'm talking about. I'll fuck it. I brought you into this world, and I'll bring you out, Travis. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know if you have a piece of this company, but I feel like there are people who, who may have a piece of the company. I feel like there are people who may have a piece of it or being paid to promote it because it's just it's excessive the amount they talk about it. Okay, can we talk about this two, two, in two ways here really quick? So, yeah, go ahead, Brian. Two, two things here. First one is, do you have any crypto, any Bitcoin? Yes. yes. Okay, and are you, uh, quick answer, are you bullish, bearish? So I'm assuming bullish. Um, I'm bullish. Okay, how about any uh, NFTs? No. No, okay. And then the, the second thing then would be this, uh, are they legit or not? But Peter, you, why don't you talk really quick? Oh, no, I was just making jokes. Okay, so like, change my mind. Change my mind here. I, I would love to, but my mind, other than making a quick buck, which is obviously- I'm not, I'm not changing good. your mind. I just think that, that um, the characterization of like a business owner who could like screw his customers or something, I think that's pretty rare and stupid as a business owner to try to uh, screw your customer, especially when it's something this large, when you have an NBA exclusive contract. I think that's- super unlikely and just just illogical from a business owner's perspective you can make go ahead it seems like you I, so i don't, I don't I, it's not necessarily screwing the people over by buying the moments and hyping them up though like there's it, i guess it's not a victimless crime because it's, it's building interest in something and making it seem like there's a lot more money on the site than it actually is but i i don't i would put that past somebody i don't know and so they yeah. did. They have responded. Peter's going to know this better than me, but they have responded. Like some of the owners, or one of the owners, has a bunch of cards. But I get the plan is that like they're going to delete those cards. They were using them originally for like promotional things and giving them away and stuff like that. So they they do have a response for some of that. Um, but yeah, more broadly, like l- l- when you have this golden goose, it's it, it, I think it's illogical to f- fuck around like that. It doesn't make any sense. These guys can easily make a couple mil a year. You know what I mean? Or, or who knows how big it can get. So, like, uh, I don't see them playing around in any games. Peter, do you have anything to talk about there? Well, I think I, I just I would say to Travis, I th- and I understand what's hard to untangle, the individual self-interest versus the overall ecosystem and, like, the long-term – viability of that personally like i've made a point of going out on these streams and i'm not pushing this as like this is a long-term investment vehicle like personally i i think that but what i'm saying to people is this is fun this is a casino this is arcade this concept of digital collectibles is very fun it's a really fun game to engage with but i i have been very personally um making sure that i'm not pumping bags like that's been a concern of mine because i hear that from people like you you know it may be the time when right now with the g the whole gme thing the gamestop that you know i I had friends who bought gamestop at 300 i'm just like what are you doing it's just the hype you know you get this insane fomo to buy these things and i I mean all you hear about top shots returns returns roi 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 but then like i hear you can't withdraw and 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 I, i have a lot of friends who are into top shot you can't withdraw you know, I see the guy who owns it, the uh, Raham or, or whatever his name is. He just a lot of empty promises and empty words. He says a lot without, it, it, without it seems like doing much to me. You know, he, he and, and to me, I, I just it rubs me the wrong way. Um, but I, you know, everybody's making money and, and everybody's happy. But at some point, I feel like the market's gonna come crashing down, and I just wonder where the liquidity is even coming from right now. I don't know who's buying these expensive moments. Yeah. And it is, I had a sobering realization. I was telling this to Brian right before we went on. I was getting my crypto off of original Binance today, a bunch of shit coins I had bought, you know, four years ago and Binance was locking me out. They wanted to put me on Binance US. I'm having to download wallets for these privacy coins I had bought, Monero and Zcoin. I'm having to run full noids and GUIs and all of this stuff just to get my crypto. And I was like, what the fuck was I thinking back then? And I do think, I think it's fair to have this skepticism about this build. Uh, or about this kind of NFT world right now. But there is also this idea of, you know, where this is going. I do feel pretty confident that NFTs are are very much going to be a part of our world going forward. And the question is, am I buying a shit coin or am I buying Bitcoin? Because I do think there's probably a Bitcoin within this space right here. It's just hard to know what that is. And I feel like with Top Shot and their NBA license, they're they're pretty well positioned. 
That, that's fair. And that's fair. And, and I'm, you know, you guys, as you say, you've been in the, the shit coins as well. I, I, I was in that too, you know. I remember having Dragon Chain and I bought on the ICO at like five cents. And I was, I was a true baller back then, man. It was up to like five dollars at one point. I, I felt like I was, I figured out the next best thing ever. And all of a sudden now you look back, I think it's five cents again. My buddy, I sold maybe my buddy five cents back. Yeah. Yeah. But we can also say a lot of these criticisms about other, other, uh, um, companies, businesses, the Bitcoin, you could have said this about who know, you know, if Bitcoin would have went br busto, you know, we would look like fools too. So like, uh, you, I, I'm just on team, uh, allow people to, you know, assess their own risk and yeah. make their own decisions. I think this whole financial declaring that you're not a financial advisor regulations is a bunch of stupid bullshit. So and what, Travis, I would add, and like I'm saying this sincerely because I'm like I'm constantly conscious of this because I've been doing streams and I like want to be a hundred percent responsible and set realistic expectations for people. And so I'm not asking this from like the devil's advocate point of view, but like what's the difference if I'm like hyping up DFS and I do my streams and I'm like, I love DFS. This is so fun. I play the spy. I'll throw some in the Millie maker. I know that long-term maybe I, me personally, I'm slightly EV, but I might be a losing player. What's the difference in me pulling people in, making DFS seem fun when they're probably going to be long-term losers versus me like hyping up nfts or top shot and i'm like i'm having fun you can get in you'll probably lose money long run but this is something that's fun i think that's a very fair point and that's something i struggled with a lot when i you know was initially going into twitch and whatnot and trying to like i don't understand how there's so many of these tout sites and like the, the most touts are losing players right i didn't understand that why people would sub these sites but it's it's more than just winning right it is a fun factor that's why some of these sites with you know i'm not gonna name names actually but there's some there's some big talents that are they're losing players clearly to me but maybe not to average joe but like they're fun people love them and that makes complete sense i get that but i i think right now everybody's having more fun because it's the gains are just been insane right now nobody is losing a top shot and i think that's what's driving the market right now more than anything and at some point it's, in my opinion it's going to bubble and i know it's not like the the angry guy you know angry old man yelling at the clouds but like i've seen this before with shit coins where and, and 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 I get the point where like everybody make your own decisions. You are responsible for your own stuff, but man, there are a lot of not smart people out there that cannot afford to be losing money on these kinds of things that will lose money on it. And it just creates such a big issue for these people. And, and I, I feel bad. I feel bad. And I'd say at the same time as, as somebody who's gambled professionally for for a long time, and I'm taking money from these same exact people. Yeah, I don't feel that way at all. I think Peter, you're doing nothing wrong. You just like these things and you're having fun. People should assess their own risk value is, sub is subjective so and you have no right applying your values to someone else so whatever someone wants to do um listen there are there are people of all sorts of intelligence levels that do these things at differing rates so you'll play high stakes cash game with a doctor who sucks at poker and that's none of your fucking business he's smarter than you probably but he sucks at poker and you're going to beat him so there's all sorts of levels to to this and in life is in general too uh, people will buy expensive shoes, expensive shirts, and it's none of your goddamn business that it costs two dollars to make that shirt, and they want to pay four hundred for it. Okay, so like whatever someone, uh, whatever value someone subjectively applies to something, is their own choice, and we can't go around. And I'm just speaking like legislatively here. That's why I don't like this type of talk, is because that's what it leads to: is the state getting involved. And 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 then using force and coercion to stop people from doing something like this—it's ridiculous. As long as you're not committing fraud, and you actually enjoy these products, Peter, have at it. And there and, and just because Bitcoin went up and one of these things might go down doesn't mean you did something wrong. And just because uh, that stupid Canadian uh, company that I went under and I lost money on the DFS site, like that's not like someone's fault for promoting that site. What what, the, what was the name of that stupid site? I don't, I don't want to <laughs> name fancy all the sites fancy. I don't remember anymore. Is it fancy? Yeah. That happens. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that, that happens. But I do really, really quickly with the, uh, I know you got to go, Pat, but he, uh, this is kind of like a, a more like high level view of what I think is going on here. And this could be totally wrong, but I really think this has to do with the Fed and the money printing where everyone is getting rich off of every fucking, Randone's getting rich off of stock. <laughs> Peter's, Pete's getting rich off of NFTs, right? Someone else is getting rid of rich off of uh, the four million dollar guy you had on your show, Adam. He's getting rich off of uh, 
hot and top shots. There's people getting rich off of Bitcoin. No one can make a mistake now. And I think that's just because assets are getting inflated. Yeah, and I, I think mean, we just can't tell. And so it's like you can't be you can't be wrong here. So as long as you're not holding dollars, like at least you got a chance, I think. Um, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes only. But yeah, I really think that like all this, a lot of this stuff is part of this gigantic bubble that we started in 2008 and just prices are skyrocketing and people, I think there's a lot of signal being, being missed here. And I don't know where it's going to drop and what ball's going to drop, but like talking like that someone shouldn't tow it up top shot and stuff is like, you're missing the forest for the trees here. What you should be doing is complaining about the fucking fed. That's what you should be complaining about. Not Peter or some other guy going, Hey, invest in Bitcoin. No, and I, I, I don't think that Travis is complaining about me. I'm, I'm not but, talking about Travis here. I'm just making like a general. Yeah. Like, I, I, trust me, I don't take anything you say personally either. I, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I disagree with a lot of that, and I would love to go out on another thing. And, but I, I completely understand what you're saying. I get it. I just – maybe I'm overprotecting people. But, I, but you said it yourself, right? The, we're in a massive bubble right now, and at some point it, it's not going to be fun and games anymore for a lot of people. In, in, let, me, let, think, me, let me let me let me let me let me clear. Like, if you want to personally like 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 uh, uh, say something like, I think this is wrong. This is a bad investment. People shouldn't be doing that. I have no problem with that at all. I'm just saying from a from a, from a, a getting the state involved. I do have a problem with that, and I have a problem with you like approaching your legislator saying we need to protect these stupid people. I okay, that's that, that's fair. Okay, and I, I agree. And, with that. and Travis, I think what you're saying and the tough thing to untangle is people from like I. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I truly like, I'm just having, I'm having fun. This stuff is fun for me to interact with, but sometimes that is hard to untangle for people who have direct financial incentives for hyping up qualities about a thing that they might reap benefits of that someone else won't reap those same benefits. I'm guessing that's kind of what you're hinting at. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same reason I didn't go in or haven't gone into like building my own insiders or whatnot. You know, I feel like if I'm, putting out my own website, own website, I got to put my best stuff. If I'm not putting my best stuff, I'm misleading people. And I don't want to do that. And that's why I've never gotten into building my own site. But you could still, you could still provide quality information without your best stuff. There's other ways to do it. Um, I, got, I hear you, but I got, people are not going to paytap.com hoping for like my 75% stuff. They're, they want what I know. And, and I, I don't want to provide yeah, that. Slide. That's for sure. Yeah. In that's these singular I instances, I think that's admirable and a good, good way to do business too but just like generally speaking though i don't think what you were saying there peter is like that someone's looking out for themselves or something like that self-interest rational self-interest is like a good thing it's it they're, they're not doing this just to fucking screw you right like the division of labor um and and you being in your self-interest is a good thing right so like the doctor can the doctor can be a doctor and deliver uh amazon shit but it's good yeah. that he just does uh, he's just a doctor so he could take care of the guy who's delivering a truck who could give us our products so we can work here. And this is how society functions. It's like, I don't know. I, I can't stand this type of, um, that like people are out to get that everyone, that every business owner is out to get, to, to, to get you. Like, I, I don't see it that way. That's fair. Travis, do you have to go? I, I do have to go or else I'm going to be a lot poorer. Unfortunately. No, you who, gotta do who's it. out? Uh, Brian needs to know who he needs to late swap to. Yeah, I, I honestly haven't been paying attention. Looks like um, no, no one's out. Looks like there's a potential injury though with Roby. Yeah, there's Chris Paul at nine nine o'clock. So. Yeah, so I got to change stuff around, unfortunately. Okay. All yeah. right, well, Travis. No, and uh, we appreciate you coming on. We didn't mean to get into a, a contentious argument about top shot is, responsibility. Listen, when you win a million bucks, you got to put your big boy pants on. This is what Lowell's does. Like I mean, the funny thing is I'm putting all my money in top shot, so that's going to work out for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to drive the market down. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm Eddie, influencing is this right your, now. Is this your second milli? No, I've, I've never won one before. That's my oh, first okay. One. I thought you won one before. Okay. Well, yeah. Congrats, Trav buddy. Where where can people find you? You did a you did a Twitch stream. I know some people have followed you on the Twitch streets. Are you going to get back in those more regularly now? No, I was just like to say what's up. I've wanted to get back on there for it's been like half a year, and I just want to say what's up. And it seemed like a good time. Yeah. All right, we'll let you go. Get to your late swaps. We appreciate you stopping by. Congratulations on the million. Congratulations on the ring. And uh, let us know your Top Shot username. We'll send you a gift here sometime soon. I actually made one on the plane because I was trying to get that one K pack, but uh, <laughs> I don't even remember what it is. I don't even remember what it is, but I'll catch you guys later. Thank you for having me on. Thanks, buddy. 
What a loser. Dude, that fucking guy, man. He doesn't even like tap shots. I <laughs> know. That's a that's the beauty of it. I love that. Hey God, I didn't even hear your experience too. I'm, uh, I was kidding, by the way. Travis is cool. I'm cool. No, we we love Travis. So we appreciate Travis coming on. What was your I was like so on Saturday, uh, we had gone like our friends invited us over to do a bonfire at their house. So I like we were going over, we we're doing a bonfire, it's freezing cold, we're by the fire. And I've got my fucking phone up waiting in a queue to try to buy a thousand dollar pack that I wasn't going to tell my wife I was trying to buy. Didn't get it. What was, what was your experience on, on Saturday? I went in the queue, right in the queue was in your discord and, uh, immediately popping up. People are getting packs, dude. And so my first, my first thought was, all right, people are fucking with people. And Pete's going to have to start banning guys because that's not cool, man. Like, you can't just start saying this type of fun. And then I'm going to leave the <laughs> – and then I'm like, wait a second. Maybe this is true. No, it was so – it was really fun. And, like, I again, talking about personal responsibility, like, my Discord – has gotten very big the the top shot discord specifically like big relative to the rate of growth of my discord from fantasy and other stuff and i've added mods we call them bouncers in there just to handle these kind of situations because i was legitimately worried and my wife's like why are you on your phone like on the bonfire i'm like i'm making sure no one's being like unreasonable after everyone's so pissed off like i don't know like it, this it, it literally ruined the fun for me for a while. My my buddy John was sending me a message and he said someone in your Discord was asking, is Pete okay? Because I just took a few steps back for like a few days of not going in there because I'm like, guys, we're just having fun. Like you're mad because you couldn't give a thousand dollars to buy a pack. Like I get that the EV was good, but like they're in fucking beta and they're working shit out. And like this is no longer fun for me. When you guys are losing your goddamn minds, like, was it awful in there during that period? That, okay. Now I'm starting to feel what you were kind of getting at there with, with Petty too, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So like, because this is out of your control too. So like yeah. if top shot goes, but I'm saying like you, like you might feel like a, a personal responsibility if top shot, it does turn out these guys are scams or something, whatever. Let's just say it just goes under for any, for some, for any reason you're like, holy shit, I just, I just spent like, you know, uh, two months pumping this up. I have a discord. And and whereas like, let's say you're making your own DFS projections. Like you're like, listen, these are my DFS projections. What do you want? Like they were good or they were bad. They won. They didn't win. I'm sorry. You lost money, but like, you know, the deal here where like, this is kind of like out of your hands. So it's like, it's, it's, I, I imagine that's like much, yeah, different feeling. Uh, and I think the thing, if, if I can get real, uh, it was like my discord has grown like proportionally to my stuff in the people that come in were people who are fans of my stuff and they like my content like that. And it was this community of people that were just fans of me and wanted to find like-minded people. And it was great. And then this top shot influx happened and you have a lot of people who are in the, like, I want a quick buck. I want the information. How do I get rich? How do I make money? And so it was the first time I had this influx of users and I've seen how the top shot general discord goes. It's an absolute shit show. We joke about toxicity, everything in my life, Brian, it starts as a bit and then it becomes real. I joked about esports toxicity because I didn't have to deal with it. I actually had to start dealing with toxicity in my own discord. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want this to be a place for like-minded, smart, rational human beings. And I, when I feel that, slipping out of my control and not that I'm trying to like fucking censor people, but just wanting a good community. I feel sick to my stomach and I see the OGs from my stuff and they're like, Oh, this discord sucks now, or it's not like it used to be. And that makes me feel like shit because there's a lot of people who are in here because they don't want to be a part of this. They just want to know what fucking cool cat to buy. Hmm. Uh, I don't, well, the second part, I don't know. I do want to say one, um, one thing like, it's a freedom of speech angle where I'm sure you know where I, where I am on that. I, that's a private, that's your like private property. Essentially. I know it's a discord server. And so banning people is not a violation of any Liberty principle in your own private discord. 
I banned one person and a guy who immediately texted me. It was like a friend of the show and had been like a fan of mine for a long time. But like, I haven't had to ban people yet, but I just, I don't know. I feel a responsibility for the experience of people who were there because of me in that community. And mm. now that's somehow ruined. And maybe that's wrong, but I feel that. Yeah. No, no, no. I, that, that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. And it's t- it's tougher because it's not your proprietary, you know, pr- property. You're not. No. It's not like you can go like talk to your your CEO and be like, listen, we got to write the ship here. You know, like you have nothing to do with it. I still, I would, I still think you may be beating yourself up a little bit on it. Like, cause it really doesn't like, like you, as long as you're legitimately excited about something, like you, you shouldn't really, I think feel any, any moral responsibility for it. You know, as long as you're not sitting there shilling, like, cause they're like, I watch some of these YouTubers who do like, like videos and you could tell like they're done on the topic, but they're still doing it because they get so many views. I don't know if you've ever saw that and you're like, this guy's just not enjoying it anymore. And it's like, as long as you're not like, like that's even, even there, I would say that's kind of like at least 50, 50, like morally. Um, But yeah, as long as you're not there, like you're not doing fraud, go ahead, sir. No, I, that's in one thing I am really good about. I will not do shit that I don't enjoy. If I don't feel like, making fucking top shot videos. I won't make top shot videos. If I wake up and I don't feel like doing lulls, I will tell you, Brian, I don't feel like doing lulls. I do. I only do stuff that I like. There's so much shit I could have done. And I'm not even like, you know, bragging or whatever. I could grow my YouTube channel so much fucking faster if I wanted. I know the playbook. I know how to do it. I I was literally talking about this the other day with my wife, but I would burn out. It would be things I wouldn't enjoy. I only do things I enjoy. So I, I feel good about how I talk about Top Shot. I continue to make efforts to talk about it in realistic ways and what people can get out of the experience. But the the Discord thing was something where I felt like I had this community and then it kind of unfurled out from underneath me. And I think it's going all right. But I, it did make me feel shitty for a little bit there that you know, people who came into the Discord originally weren't getting the experience they thought. And now it basically turned into a top shot general adjacent Discord. That is obviously much better than the top shot main Discord, yeah. but it's still, it wasn't the community that I cultivated. Yeah. I like going to yours more than theirs. That's for sure. Like I usually go to yours for quick news. So, I mean, it definitely has some utility to it. Um, like, you remember, I, I don't know why it's popping my, my brother sent me this. Uh, uh, YouTube short YouTube video of Neo Geo. Do you remember the video game system? It might yeah. For your time, but it was like the super powered up Nintendo. So it had like whatever, I don't know, like 32 bit graphics back when it was eight bit days or whatever. Yeah. Like $800 and like $200 for a game and shit like that. And it, you know, it, it, it Turbo Graphics 16. I don't know if you remember that one. You know, what if you were the guy back then? There was the internet like this. And you were, you're like, no, this system's awesome. This system's great. Right. And it shits the bed. Yeah. Like, is that your, like, if you legitimately think this is an awesome system and it turns out that, you know I mean? Businesses fail all the time. Constantly. Yeah. Like, I don't know what, like, it, it, it's so funny too. Like even, I even heard Travis say like, everyone assumes that like <laughs> that we're getting a piece of the cut from Top Shot. People are like, do you have do you have stock in Top Shot? And every time I'm like, I fucking wish I had stock in Top Shot. Like I'm literally, if anyone wants to know the financial benefit I've had on Top Shot, it's maybe making like thirty four dollars on YouTube ads uh, <laughs> across a few different streams. <laughs> like that's, know, yeah. that's the financial benefit from Top Shot. So people probably think these YouTube ads pay like. For the mortgage or something. Yeah, if you want me to release the the uh, the my tax returns on my YouTube ads, I, I will for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that was a tough thing because I've never, I I just felt a level of responsibility on it than I had ever thought on anything else because DraftKings is so established or a best ball market is so right. established. No one's calling you a fraud. No one's accusing you. If I say draft Lavisca Chenault, no one's like Pete's pumping his bags. He's financially benefit by telling you to draft LaVisca Chanel. But isn't that kind of an admission of like, it's almost elitist, elitist thinking there, right? Yeah. Cause you're like, okay, people are no idiot would know that DraftKings isn't this 
gambling thing, right? Like it's so well established that anyone who wants to play, I'm not responsible, but this thing's new. So like I am responsible, but it's really just like, you're saying what Petty was saying. There's a bunch of stupid people. There's, st there's a bunch of stupid people. We got to look into this. We really got to think about the stupid people, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. Like I said, smart people played poker and lost money to me smarter than me, you know, all, all the time. I lost money to people who were, who were dumber than me. I do it and DFS daily. <laughs> yeah. Like this shit happens all the time. And, tr you know, like lumping all these lumping people in, like they have no ability to assess their own risk. I think it's like kind of like a modern last decade type of thought process, which by the way, Six years ago, I would have been right on that gravy train too. I would have been saying the exact same thing. Like, well, we got to protect these people. Protect but what's the difference? The market overlap between Top Shot and DFS is probably pretty goddamn big. But like for one, you're like, no, they should know better. The other one, you're like, no, I need to protect them. It was like the same people. You know what I mean? Like we got to let people, you know, have their own subjective value and assess their own risk and go about their fucking lives. Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, it, it, I know you yeah. have, to have some personal responsibility here because you have this big discord thing. But like, well, I and I've had a few. It's crazy too how the human brain works and focuses on things and not that this has been impacting. But I had like one of the first streams I did. Um, there was some guy who was trolling me the whole time. And I told him, I was like, what's your top shot address? I'll send you some of my Fred Van Vliet's like just as a joke. And he has been so upset about that in there. Like if you go to the Top Shot General, he's constantly talking about, he's calling me a grifter that I promised to send him his Fred Van Vliet. This guy hates me because he didn't know me. He didn't realize I'm fucking making a joke. This is a guy who's trolling me the whole show. I troll him back for one second and he loses his fucking mind. Yeah. I mean, these are the kind of people that are out there. And I'm like, it, I think within the DFS world, it like self-selects. People know my sense of humor. They know what I do, whatever. It's like people who like me, follow me, and who don't, don't. And it works out great. But in this like new world, it become this. It became this whole chaotic thing. Yeah. What, I mean, what's, what is the policy there? Because like, I've, I've, I'm like more lax on where I would have been. Like if someone was like rude to me or something like that, before I'd be like, fuck you, fuck it. How about you're fucking a piece of shit block or something like that? You know what I mean? I don't think I've ever blocked anyone, but like, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't have to deal with you. Exactly. You, you think I owe you something. I don't like you're delusional and that's not my problem. Yeah. You know what I mean, and, and, and cause there's a lot of people like that still doesn't, I think, justify any variation, how I act or how I, you know, the way I want to uh, let people know where I see value or how I think something's fun. Right. It shouldn't change anything. But yeah. like dealing with those people is definitely like, I think a side issue. I don't know. Yeah. It's so weird too, because like on Twitter, I literally have zero people blocked. If I, if I don't want to deal with you, I just mute you and you can shout into the void. But I felt like with the discord stuff, I feel like a level of ownership in my discord of like, if someone just be an asshole nonstop, yeah. You know, like it's not honestly for me, I can handle it, but it's the community members, the OG members who are like, this used to be a fun place to interact. Yeah. And now this guy's in it. And so, yeah. right. And no, I, and I will, like if I, if I run into that, but it, this is just a new thing for me for how to handle this for other people, because I feel the burden for other people. The, the, the thing that I was seeing a lot is like, oh, well, the influencers will get the packs. Let's see how the influencers do. Did you have you seen that? that, that oh, button? trust me, I've seen it because Jacob from uh, Top Shot came on the stream and he gave us two packs, two nine dollar packs. So I got eighteen dollars. I've received eighteen dollars from Top Shot, and then there's screenshots of saying, "I swear to God, if all the rich people like Peter Overs that get the packs, not to mention when I do streams with Jack." in CSU who have hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in top shot compared to my like $10,000 in top shot. It's like people are fucking crazy, dude. Pet Petty just joined, joined the chat. Petty, who, who was, who uh, got, who got scratched that I didn't notice. And by the way, Peter talked shit about you as soon as you signed up. <laughs> and I was, I backed you up. So yeah. Don't the watch fact that 
the fact that I've got branded as the rich people, as the poorest man among the sh- people I do shows with, is is such a rich irony. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the, in, the influencer stuff with the rich people that always gives me. I don't even do the no toxicity on those because I kind of want to encourage them. No, I'm, just, I'm in there stoking the flames for the thing that's like breaking you apart inside. Well, that's what I like too. I was like, guys, like I'm having fun. But if you guys are fucking losing your mind over $18 of promo packs, I mean, I got guys fucking setting alarms to wake up in the middle of the night to get $9 packs. And I'm like, look, I'm having fun. Top Shot is cool. But you're fucking setting your alarm to get a $9 pack? Like, chill the fuck out. Like, what the fuck? I'm for it. I'm all for it. I'm all for it, man. I love this. You, this is, you are not setting your alarm, Brian, at three I've of the morning. I've crazy shit before. This is, that's how, that's the only skill I had, I think, for anything <laughs> I got good at was that being obsessive with it. That's how I got good at everything I've ever gotten good at. Not that I don't know if you can get good at Top Shot, but maybe you could and you could figure this marketplace out and make a, make a buck. Um, well, you got to, that's the thing of like, you're, you're not only factoring in the EV of the pack. If you if you're setting your alarm at 3 a.m. for a nine dollar pack that is worth thirty six dollars, you are saying like like, just think of the hourly hourly rate you are assigning to your time. Like you are the hourly rate you are giving your own time is absurd. There, there. This is the one time in the last hundred years though where people probably have a lot of free time. They might not have to go into work or work from home. But yes, uh, you're right. Yeah. Um, the, the, anyway, those hours of sleep would, would be worth it. I got to wrap this up. I, this is why I love Lulz because we can talk to Millie maker winners. We can, uh, talk about issues. You can get me to crack and talk about things that are on my mind. But, uh, Brian, I appreciate you in this show as always. Yeah, man. It was fun. Thanks, uh, Pat. Congrats again. Yep. Um, and, um, uh, download our podcast which I'll be putting up, you know, whatever, like within the hour or so. Yep. yep. Support it. Even if you listen on the YouTube version, just download that pod. I download all my own pods and then swipe on them. <laughs> I'm not one I of those. Listen. Do you listen? I have so many shows, man. I can't listen back well, to myself. And also you're like, obviously way better at this than me. So I want to listen to like, at least occasionally be like, okay, what are you doing wrong here, dummy? You know, that type of thing. <laughs> no. Uh, all right. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe to the channels. We're still simulcasting this on both Brian and Mike's channel. We have the audio version down below. We are here consistently every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. See you next week.